the Lord this morning. Do me a favor and squeeze the person's hand that you're holding. If you ever wanted to know what a miracle feels like, you're holding one in your hand right now. If the devil would have had his way, the person whose hand you're holding would have never made it here today. Uh, but that devil made one mistake. He fooled around and let you come to church today. And I figure if you're going to come to church on Monday, you might as well have church when you get there. Uh, I've come to find out one thing about the Lord, and that is whatever you want from God, if you give it away, he'll multiply it and give it back to you. Most people think that's just a principle about money, but that's more than money. If you want peace, then pray for somebody else's peace. If you want your child to act right, pray for somebody else's child to act right. If you want a financial breakthrough in your life, pray for somebody else to get a financial breakthrough in their lives. So before I pray for you, why don't you take a minute and pray for the person whose hand that you're holding right now. Open your mouth. Come on now. This is the early crowd. Early people like to pray. Early shall I seek him. Take a minute and pray for him right now. Somebody, uh, Somebody's mind is in torment. Pray for him right now. Somebody needs a financial breakthrough in their money. Pray for them right now. Somebody. Somebody's marriage is on the rocks. The devil is a liar. You ain't going to divorce court because I'm praying for you right now. Hallelujah. Somebody barely made it in here. Their body needs to be healed. I'm praying that they don't have to take as much medication as they normally have to take. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for them for a minute. It's no accident who you sat next to. God put you right up next, right next to them. So that you can touch and agree with them. Come on, now open your mouth, prayer warriors. All my mothers, help me pray a little bit. All my mothers, all the women on the wailing wall. All the men in the house. Lord, you're worthy. You ain't never heard nobody pray till man opens his mouth and begins to pray. Somebody in here begin to talk to him. I promise you, if you talk to him, he'll talk to you. Open your mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for what you're doing for what you're getting ready to do, dear Lord, for what you have done. I give you praise in advance. Yes, yes, dear Lord, yes. before you do something for me, do something for my neighbor. Heal my neighbor's body. Touch my brother my sister. For I know, dear Lord, if you touch my neighbor, that means you're somewhere in the neighborhood. And if I pray for them, dear Lord, I know you'll open up a door for me. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you now. We praise you now. Do something in this place you never have done before. And as a secondary consequence, we'll praise you like we never have before. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Do, Lord, I ask you to walk up and down every aisle. Touch everybody that needs to be touched. Heal everybody that needs to be healed. Set somebody free on this first day, dear Lord. Let every other day be lanyap and leftover, dear Lord. We don't just want to praise you, but we owe you praise. We're going to give you glory for something you even haven't done yet. We're going to praise you, dear Lord, for what we don't have until what we don't have becomes what we do have. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now drop those hands and go for yourself. Come on, y'all a little too quiet for me. Somebody open your mouth and haul off and holler. Come on, just get it all out. Let's get that Monday morning voice and open up your mouth and help me bless him. For God is good and greatly to be praised. We're thankful unto him and we bless his name. While you are standing, while you are standing, can you help me uh, give God praise? I always have appreciated great leadership. And I have had the wonderful privilege of, of being in the midst of great leadership a lot. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt said uh, that in the absence of great leadership, we'll follow anybody that'll talk. Uh, but I want to give God praise for the great leader of the Gospel Music Workshop of America, the one and only. <laughs> Amen. I am a, I know this is not church in a traditional sense, but I don't believe you can say you love the pastor or love the bishop or love the chairman without saying you love his wife. Amen. His lovely wife. We give God praise for her and for all the people of God uh, that are here on today. Would you throw your arms around your neighbor and tell him you're in store for a breakthrough this morning? Tell him that. A, a breakthrough, a break loose, a break on. If I was the devil, I'd pack my bags and I'd leave right now. I leave the convention center, I leave, I leave Cincinnati, I leave all the state of Ohio because I know God is getting ready to do something this week. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am, I am honored. I am honored to be here and I know that so many could and uh, people whose shoes I'm not even worthy to latch it. I'm just honored to be here. I don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. Uh, I understand church. I've been in church since I was six years old. You normally invite people that bring people in. But I was honest, Bishop. Nobody don't know me. <laughs> Amen.
Amen. But I want to give God praise for this wonderful opportunity to uh, these tremendous men of God and my friends, fathers in the ministry, uh, Bishop Jerome Ross and Bishop Moore and amen. Two great singers, Judy and all those that are here, Moret and amen. Lady West, we give God praise for you. Joy, thank you for coming with me on today. Uh, Esther chapter number eight. You and I are made a pact. We will bring salvation back. Where there is love, he'll be there. Uh oh. He'll reach out his hand to you. He'll have faith in all you do. Just call his name. Say he'll be, there. he'll be there. Come on, say it again. Say he'll be there. He'll be there. Come on, say he'll be, he'll be there. If you just call his name. Just call his name. Wave your hand and say he'll be there. He'll be there. Say it again. Say just call. Just call his name. Because he will. He'll be there. Everybody lift your voice and say, He'll be. He'll be there. Say he will. He'll be there. If you just call his name. Just call his name. Somebody say he'll be there. He'll be there. Say it again. Yeah. Let me hear you say he. I know he will. He'll be there. Just call his name. Yeah. Just call his name. He will. He'll be there. Clap your hand and know he'll, he'll be there. Esther chapter number eight. Thank you, Jay and Julio. Amen. For great, great hospitality. Esther chapter number eight, beginning at verse number one. It says, On that day, King Ahasuerus gave Queen Esther the house of Haman. Ahasuerus, symbolic of God, gave Queen Esther, symbolic the people of God, the house that used to belong to Haman, the enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told how he was related to her. Look at it again. So the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from the enemy, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai over the house of of Haman. He took what used to belong to the enemy and gave it to the people of God. Mm -hmm. and look at your neighbor and tell him God's going to turn this thing around. Now, if you said something to your neighbor and they didn't say nothing back, you may be sitting next to the wrong person because I didn't get up this early in the morning and sit next to nobody that's trying to be wonderful and trying to be deep and trying to win the got it going on contest. If you sit next to somebody they didn't talk back to you, I give you personal permission to put that little Baptist finger in the air and go sit by somebody else because you ain't got time to be sitting next to nobody else that's trying to be deep. I want to sit next to somebody that's desperate for a breakthrough. I want to sit next to somebody that's going to give God praise at any minute. I just look at your neighbor and tell them God's getting ready to turn this thing around. Tell them that. Amen. Holy Ghost, you preach in Jesus' name. Amen. living in unusual, unusual times, uh, not just in the world, but more particularly in the body of Christ, uh, where things don't seem to matter to people like they should. And uh, I'm beginning to wonder what else is going to have to happen uh, to jar us into consciousness. You know that things need to turn around when over 15 million people are unemployed in America. Oh my God. And people now are having to make a decision, our senior citizens are having to make a decision on whether they are going to eat food or buy their medicine. 
something's going to have to turn around where not only do I have to be concerned about being arrested for something that I did out there, but now I have to be concerned of whether or not somebody's going to arrest me while I'm in my own house. Uh, we are the highest in unemployment, but yet we practice slang as a secondary language. And you wonder why you ain't getting paid. The reason you ain't getting paid is because nobody wants to hear that foolishness coming out of your mouth. You know something's going to have to turn around when one out of nine children are being touched inappropriately. But yet we won't press charges against these stepfathers and these uncles and these babysitters that are scarring our children for life. Something has to turn around when parents trying to be friends with their children and spending $185 on tennis shoes, but you don't have any books in the house or computer in the house. Some of us are just ghetto rich. We've got more on our back than we have in the bank. Look at your neighbor and tell them something's got to turn around. Something got to turn around. We don't care nothing about our credit. We go to these check cashing places on the corner and you spend 8% to 35% for somebody to cash money, a check that you earn, but then you won't bring 10% to God. Tell your neighbor something has got to turn around. When these days now our parents have become too lazy to cook a decent meal and now you're raising your children on Big Macs and French fries and orange sodas, rushing them out of the door in the morning with a little cold bowl of cereal that has so much sugar in it you might as well pour milk over candy and now you're getting mad at the teacher because your children are bouncing all over the wall. You're getting mad at them because they're trying to raise a child that you won't discipline. We don't care anything about our children. Our children now, we don't, we don't even raise our children. Our children are, are being raised by BET and MTV, staying up all night playing video games uh, while you, Stella, in the other room getting your groove on. Uh, tell your neighbor things have got to turn around. <laughs> But isn't it funny that our grandmothers who didn't have a Benz and who didn't have a Lexus, uh, who never had cable, never went on vacations, uh, they were able to make it uh, because they said, if I can help somebody uh, as I pass along, uh, if I can cheer somebody with the word or with the song, uh, if I can show somebody what they're traveling wrong, uh, then my living won't be in vain. Uh, when are we going to get to the level we say it's not all about us? Lord, if things are going to change, then if God anointed you to see it, then he must have called you to change it. You wouldn't have saw it like you saw it if you were not anointed. To, I didn't say just talk about it. I said do something about it. What I love about God is God is the only one that can know you and still use you. <laughs> I'm not talking about the church you. I'm talking about the real you. I'm talking about the, the you that don't pay your taxes. That's who I'm talking about. Uh, uh, because if God can use Paul, uh, who murdered Christians, maybe, just maybe, uh, God can use you. Uh, if God can use Moses, uh, who had a prison record, maybe, just maybe, uh, God can use you. Uh, if God can use Rahab, uh, who was a lap dancer... Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe God can use you. If God can use David, who hit everything that moved. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. I don't want to talk to y'all that ain't never did nothing before. I want to talk to those of us who said, you know what? I did it. I did it. I smoked it. I did it. I drank it. I did it. I hit it. Look at you, they've been telling, I did do it, tell them that. Now don't tell them what you did, because if you tell church folk what you did, they'll fool around and tell everybody else. But is there anybody in here that's honest enough to admit, they say, I done did some stuff, but still I want to be you. 
away with this perfect church. Everybody want to act like they ain't never done nothing. Huh? Like you always been saved. Huh? Uh, like you just had lunch with Jesus. Huh? But I'm talking about those of us who made some mistakes huh? since we've been saved, huh? since we've been singers, huh? since we had collars, huh? since we had change. Huh? I want to talk to the real people huh? who say, you know what? I got some issues. Huh? Touch it even tell them I got some issues. I got some issues. Huh? No, no, no. For real. I got some show enough issues. Huh? Because if you were to follow me home, you probably wouldn't think I was saved. If you were to look in my refrigerator, but still, with all of our issues, isn't it good to know that he can still use? Let me deal with this text before you think I'm not theologically astute. Uh, when you're looking at Esther, you're looking at a heroine of scripture. You're looking at somebody who saw that something needed to be changed and decided that she was the one that was going to do something about it. Well, her story actually climaxes as Mordecai, her cousin, goes to her and says, Esther, we've got a problem in the camp. And that is, there is a villain by the name of Haman that is coming against the people of God. Esther said, no problem, Mordecai. Why don't you get your people together and fast for me? And I'll get my people together and I'll fast for you. Because Esther knew that nothing really significant ever happened unless the people were on one accord. That if we're going to deal with this enemy, we've got to be on one accord. She, uh, she knew that the walls of Jericho would have never come tumbling down unless the people were on one accord. That the Holy Ghost would have never came to the church uh, uh, because this is the way the enemy operates. Uh, when the enemy comes against you, uh, Satan is not out of order. Uh, I know this bust your little bubble, but he is not disorganized uh, and he is not chaotic. Uh, when the enemy comes against you, uh, he has a highly organized plan uh, to come against you. Uh, as a matter of fact, when they accused Jesus uh, of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub, Jesus said, oh no. Uh, he says, Satan has a kingdom uh, and a house divided uh, shall not stand. Uh, you can look from Genesis to Revelations uh, and you'll never see a demon fighting against another demon you can look from the table of contents to the maps and you'll never see a witch fighting against another witch you'll never see a principality fighting against a principality it's only when you deal with church folk that you see this church don't like that church and the deacon is fighting against the pastor the praise team don't like the choir that's because we don't understand order but if we go come against this demon touch him and tell him they gotta be order in the house oh we gotta get order in the house get your rebellious hips together huh, that we're going to have order in this house. Huh. Whether it's going to be this house huh, or whether it's going to be your house. Huh. There comes a time when you got to tell your child huh, that if you're going to live in my house, huh, if you're going to drink my water, huh, if you're going to eat my bread, huh, then you're going to get yourself together. Huh. Give three people a high five huh, and just say order in the house. Order in the house. Huh. Oh, you, gotta, you don't want to listen to nobody. Nobody can't tell you nothing. Huh. But before I promote you, baby, huh, you got to be able to have some order in this house. has come against has come against the people of God and Esther said Esther said I gotta talk to the king but she didn't want to make the mistake of the last girl she said you gotta have VIP privileges to go and talk to the king but she said even though it is against tradition Oh, Jesus, tradition. Oh, tradition makes the word of God of non effect. Sometimes we just doing stuff huh, just because the last generation is doing it. Huh? And you wonder why people don't come to our churches huh? because we just doing old dead stuff that don't work any. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Uh, she said, but people have got to care more about themselves. Got to care more about other people than they do about themselves. And said, I'm not doing this for me. I got to go talk to the king. See, the problem was Mordecai was a Jew. And the Jews were being oppressed by this man named Haman. And the bottom line is Haman wanted everybody to bow down to him. But Mordecai said, I refuse to bow down to my oppressor. He said, I'm not going to change my accent in order to make my oppressor feel comfortable. 
Uh, he said, I'm not going to change who God made me in order to impress somebody that don't like me. And because Mordecai would not kiss up to Haman, Haman got mad at him. Ain't that like a lot of people you know? As soon as you decide you're not going to have your lips glued to their behind, now they don't want to be bothered with you. But you got to get to the place you say, you know what? I'm all right with me. Is there anybody in here? Throw your head back and say, I'm all right with me. If you like me, fine. But if you don't like me, that's cool too. If you call me, fine. But if you don't call me, that's all right too. I got my own money. I got my own car. I can take myself to the movies. I can run my own bubble bath. I'm all right with me. Is there anybody in here that's tired of perpetrating the fraud, trying to make everybody like you? You got to get to the place where you say, if you like me, that's all right. But if you don't, the hell with you anyway, because I didn't. I don't know who I came to preach to, but life uh, is getting ready to be real lonely for some of y'all. But is there anybody here that's honest enough to admit uh, I'd rather be happy by myself uh, than to be dealing with low-down folk that didn't want me to have it in the... They'll hate you because they can't get into your business. They'll hate you because you don't run up and try to borrow money from them all the time. But you guys say, you know what, baby? I'm grown now. Your key don't fit my door anymore. And the truth of the matter is I don't have time for it. Give me an A behind five and say, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for who's doing what, who's sleeping with who, who don't like what. I got children to raise. I got bills to pay. I got stuff to do. And I just don't have time. Lord, huh? Can I get somebody to holler back in here? Huh? Throw your head back huh? and say, I don't have time. That's why I don't let nobody make fun of me by the way I give God praise. You don't know what I've been through. You got to get to the place you say, you know what? If I want to dance, let me dance. If I want to run, let me run. If I want to holler, let me holler. I got to do what I got to do to get the breakthrough that I need. Is there anybody in the house that don't care what your neighbor is thinking about you because you have absolutely no idea what it takes to be me? So if I just Tear this whole row up. I said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to kiss up to Haman. And because he did not kiss up to Haman, Haman sends out a summons to kill all the Jews. Went behind Mordecai's back to set him up. He should have been man enough. Say, so you know what? I don't like what you did. And let me deal with you one on one. But instead, what he did, he did like a lot of folk. He wanna go behind his back. Don't you feel like telling some people, look, I know you got I know you don't like me. Won't you come and tell me? As a matter of fact, cross over this line. Knock this rock off my shoulder and see, see some of y'all are too saved to go ahead and fight the enemy. But it's just somebody who say, you know, I love the Lord, but I still got a little thug in me. You know what I'm saying? I got a little gangster in me. I love the Lord, but I'm like Peter. I'll cut your ear off and then ask God to heal you. Have you ever gotten to the place where you wanted to slap somebody in the face and say, God, come and heal them later? I know you want to be like Jesus, but the truth of the matter is more of us are just like Peter. You know, we lie a little bit and still come to church. We smoke a little weed every now and then and still come to church. Drill a little nip every now and then. I know you want to be like Jesus, but tell your neighbor, hi, my name is Peter. Tell him that. I'm the one that'll fight you in the ground. That's who I am. Behind his back. But what Haman did not know is that not only was Mordecai a Jew, but Esther was a Jew also. And the Jewish people, by nature, were worshipers. I'm coming against a worshiper, not just a praiser. There is a vast difference between being a praiser and being a worshiper. If you are a praiser, you thank God for what he has done. Lord, I thank you for my house. Thank you for my car. 
thank you, dear Lord, for paying the child's tuition. I want to thank you, dear Lord, for moving my application from the bottom all the way to the top. I want to thank you for my legs and thank you for my shit. That's praise. But when you worship, you say, Lord, you know what? If I didn't have a house, if I didn't have a car, if I didn't have the money for the tuition, I can worship you for a lifetime for everything that you've already done. Do I have anybody in the building that can take a few minutes and give God what I call a post-dated worship? Come on now, don't act like you don't know what post-dated is. Post-dated says, I'm going to write the check on Monday, but don't cash it till Friday after 3. Post-dated says, Lord, I'm going to give you praise and I ain't got a dime in my pocket. I'm going to give you praise with all hell breaking loose. I'm going to worship your name with tears in my eyes, driving my car, saying, God, you still been good. Can you take about 30 seconds and give God a post-dated? It may not be good for right now, but it is good for what is getting ready <laughs> messing with messing with a worshiper and Esther, Esther said okay I gotta go in I gotta talk to this king because he's coming against my people she said some things matter some things don't she, she said freedom freedom one writer said freedom is never granted by the oppressor it must be demanded by the oppressed. And Mordecai said, Esther, when you go in there now, you, you can't be quiet because your whole family is depending upon what you say when you get in that room. Your family is going to be delivered by what, by what you say. I don't care what they said. I don't believe that when Moses went in there to talk to Pharaoh, I don't believe he went in there and said, Sir, if you don't mind, would you please? I don't believe he said that. I believe when he walked in there, he said, look here, Negro. God said to let my people go. Every now and then you got to look at the devil and say, look, you got to let my stuff go. You got to let my money go. You got to let my joy go. You got to let my children go. Give three people a high five and say, God's getting ready to let it go for you. Oh, he's getting ready to let it go. Esther goes in and she, she says words that have traveled through the annals of history. She said, if I perish, let me. She said, I got to calculate the cost of this next moment. Because if I don't go in there and do what I'm supposed to do, then the enemy is going to have the victory. See, the problem with too many people, some people are too quiet for a miracle. You sitting there with your arms folded and your legs crossed, wondering why you can't get a breakthrough. But I didn't come to talk to you. I came to talk to my loud, rowdy bunch that said, I'm going to make some noise. This next moment could be the reason why I get my healing. Look at your neighbors. I'm about to make some noise now. I'm about to holler a little bit. Look at them looking at you saying, why are you doing all of that? They say, you got a breakthrough, but you don't want me to scream. You got a husband. I'm laying up here next to a teddy bear and you don't want me to scream. I'm going to be like blind Bartimaeus. I'm going to scream and I'm going to holler until I get God's attention. Somebody here, throw your head back and get his attention for a little bit. Uh, Y'all too quiet. I need somebody to throw their head back and scream and say, God, if you don't bless nobody on my row, I'm going to be the one. As a matter of fact, I'm in charge of praise on this row right here. Let everybody else sit there, but I'm going to scream and holler until I get his attention. And in one moment, one moment with the king, I don't know what she did, no, Jesus, when she went in there. 
Uh, she was, uh, she was, I'm sure that she was intimate in the throes of his embrace. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, she had some face uh, to face time with him. Uh, I'm sure she went uh, uh, from the outer courts of his body uh, through the inner courts of his mind uh, until she touched a place in him uh, where he released something. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. See, that's what worship really is. Worship is when you get intimate with God, when you have some face to face time. See, the next moment is critical. One night, one moment, God turned the whole situation around. One moment, He changed the whole law because one person decided to take advantage of their moment. And because of that, now the Jewish people are free because of what one person did. You must understand something, uh, that, that there was a noted theologian by the name of Martin Luther that really tried to get Esther taken out of the Bible. He, he wanted to get Esther taken out of the Bible, him and his 16th century theologians, because Esther is the only book of the Bible right. where God's name right. is not mentioned. You can read through every chapter, every verse, every word. You will never see God's name mentioned. And because of that, he wanted to take Esther out of the Bible. But sometimes you got to read between the lines. Because inside of Esther is a parable that you can only learn from God. Because Esther teaches us about the redemptive power of God. How in one moment a group of people can be in bondage, but then those same group of people are totally set free. Esther is for those of us uh, who've been dealing with people uh, that's been trying to kill you. Uh, it's been for those of us uh, who had the enemy has a warrant out uh, for your anointing. Uh, this is for those of us uh, you haven't been able to sleep lately uh, because you can almost feel hell uh, coming all around you. Uh, waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning wondering when is my breakthrough coming? Even though he tried so hard, he could not do it. Because once a year, at a time called Purim, all the Jews across the world would open the Bible and they would read the book of Esther out loud. It was a reminder to them of how they got where they were. And every time they got to that name, Haman, this demon that tried to stop them from being delivered, Jews all across the world would stomp their foot. <laughs> Can you imagine them sitting in the synagogue and sitting together reading the book of Esther out loud and get to his name and say, ain't he the one that tried to stop us from being set free? And they would get to his name and with anger they would stomp their foot. In other words, it's a sign and a symbol of the person that used to be over them is now under their feet. Somebody stomp your foot. Every time that devil tries to rise up in you to make you do something that you know you wasn't called to do, you would stomp your foot. Everybody stomp their foot. It's a sign and a symbol that the devil who used to be over you took your name and tell him now he's under my feet. They would read the book out loud but not only would they stomp their foot but they would scream out a Hebrew phrase get to Haman's name and they would say Vina Hafo get to that demon's name and said he's the one that tried to stop me before I got started and they would stomp their foot in Halavina Hafohu he would get to that demon's name that satanic force and say he's the one that tried to kill me before my purpose came to pass and they would Halavina say Vina Hafohu they would stomp their foot 
and holla Fina Hafohu. Fina Hafohu is a Hebrew phrase that means that God has turned this thing around. Is there anybody in here? Give three people a high five and tell them Fina Hafohu. That means that God has turned this thing around. Somebody in here, the devil tried to stop you before you got started. Somebody holler, Vina, Hafohu. It means that God done turned this thing around. Would you do me a favor? Give three people a big high five and say, Vina, Hafohu. If you're standing to your feet, I want you to turn around and say, Vina, Hafohu. It means that God done turn this thing around. He's going to use your worst circumstance as a reminder of where you got delivered. Somebody spin around and say, Vina, Hafohu. Somebody say that God done turn this thing around. I don't know who I came to preach to, but the Lord told me to tell you that while you're here in this house, house back at your house something is turning around somebody's money is getting ready to go through a vina hafohu somebody say it again say vina hafohu that means that god is turning this thing around i can remember when i was a little boy every saturday morning at nine o'clock i would watch the super friends i would get up in the morning because the super friends they were my heroes i didn't like aquaman that much because i had a boy in my neighborhood that could outswim him i wasn't impressed by flash that much because my cousin courtney can run real fast i didn't care for batman that much because he wasn't nothing but a Negro with some utensils. But the one I liked is the one that said he's faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. But when things were all all right, he was just mild-mannered, little Clark Kent working for the Daily Planet but if you mess with his girl if you mess with Lois he would run into a phone booth and he would come out like Superman touch three people and say God is gonna be your Superman give three people a big high five and say God is getting ready to turn this thing around touch your neighbor and say that God is getting ready to turn this thing around shake him by the hand and say that God is getting ready to turn it around now I want you just to begin to turn is there anybody here is there anybody here you need a breakthrough in your life where well, sometimes the Bible said first natural then spiritual if you need something spiritual to turn around then you gotta begin to turn around lift your hands throw your head back and say God is getting ready to turn this thing around my breakthrough is our own way my turnaround is our own way I've been struggling for too long I need I need I need a turnaround give your name up a big high five and say that God is getting Take about 30 seconds and just begin to spin around. Just begin. When you get to work on Monday and your boss works on your nerves, don't cuss your boss out. Just look at it. 
when you got to deal with them crazy employees, don't get mad and go in the bathroom and cry. Look at that witch. Lift those hands all over this place. Every hand lifted. Every eye closed, every hand lifted. Somebody in here came in here on their last leg. Saying, God, if I don't get an answer this week, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. I'm tired of going through the same thing over and over again. God, I need you to be now. Every worshiper, lift those hands all over this building. Sometimes you got to have your own personal raw cry to say, God, this is my moment for a turnaround. Lift your hands all over this building. Come on now. Everybody, I want you to say something. I want you to say oh! 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 He's turning it around. Lift up your voices and say oh! Oh! He's turned, he's turning it around. Lift your voices and say, oh, 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 oh. Let me hear you say, he's turned, turning it around. Everybody say, oh. your voices. Say he's turning it. He's turning it around without the music. Everybody say oh. wondering why they're going through this rough situation, this rough circumstance. But let them know, dear Lord, that you're going to use the worst situation in their lives as a point of reference. This is where it got so bad. This is where I had to go and divorce myself from everybody and go spend some time with the Lord. Lift those hands all over this place. Father, do it for him now. Do something, dear Lord, that you have never done before. Answer prayers that some of them forgot they prayed. And I promise you, dear Lord, from the depths of our soul, we promise we're going to give your name glory. We promise we're going to give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a favor. Brother, find a brother. Sister, find a sister. Throw your arms around and say, God is turning it around. That's the problem with church people. We let people go too fast. So throw your arms around and say, oh, oh, no. This is my day for a turnaround. This is my day. This is my day. Time, lift the hands and say, He's turning. He's turning. 
now somebody threw your head back and give God a praise. Some of y'all wait until it get done. Because somebody give God a praise like it's already done. That things are getting ready. Turn around. In your life. Hallelujah. On this first day. On this first day, this first session. Everything before this was a preliminary. Some of y'all thought y'all missed y'all season, didn't you? But the Lord told me to tell you, you didn't miss your season. Because everything before today was preseason. Come on, fans. You know in preseason, uh, what happens in preseason uh, don't count uh, until you step over into your new season. 